Hello and welcome to another episode of Revealing God. Uh, sorry I was gone for about a week. Um, Lori and I took a trip to Tennessee and uh, it was fun. We had a good time. We were gone for a couple of days. Uh, long drive, um, especially for only staying for three nights in Tennessee. But we, we took two days getting down there, so uh, it wasn't too bad. Um, two days coming back. And so there we go. Anyways, uh, shirt today, God's children are not for sale. There's a big problem with uh, children trafficking, um, sex trafficking with a satanic ritual abuse. Um, kids are being stolen. Um, I don't really have time for that on this episode, but I wanted to draw your attention to it. Um, it is a big problem. And if you uh, have a chance, you may want to look into it. Um, it's happening all over the place. So anyways, uh, let's jump into it. So today we are going to answer the question of who are God's people. Okay. Now this wasn't one posed by, um, anyone in particular on Facebook or online or whatever. Um, this is one that I have struggled with a little bit because there are certain people who claim that they are God's chosen people, right? And of course the Bible talks about them being God's chosen people. And um, because this is going on YouTube, I'll be careful of what I say. Um, <clears throat> however, um, there's a good portion of these people that are not actually God's chosen people. They just claim they are, okay? Um, problem with it is they they aren't even blood related um, to the area. They, they, it's If you wanna do some research, look up the Kazarian Mafia um, and uh, that'll probably point you in the right direction. Um, Anyways, um, to keep myself out of trouble, I am just going to dive into the Bible and let's see what the Bible has to say about it, right? Because I've gone back and forth. I watch several different people online and, um, you know, I, uh, I watched Donna Clement Petruska, um, who is Kim Clement's daughter, and uh, she is all on board for Israel and... Um, and the Jewish people. And then I watch uh, Stu Peters online and he is all against Israel and the Jewish people. And for me, it's kind of confusing because the Bible, you know, is, is talked about and, you know, especially at church, you get, you get preached about, Oh, Israel, this Israel, that Israel, this, right. And uh, so I've really been praying about it and, um, wanted some guidance from God on who is actually God's chosen people, right? And so did a little diving into the Bible, um, like I like to do. And basically, I will let you know what I came up with. So I think it's a consensus that everyone can agree that uh, the Jewish people were God's chosen people um, at one point, right? Uh, in the Old Testament, they constantly talk about the Jewish people are God's chosen people. Um, you know, Father Abraham, the whole Jewish line, um, Jesus, uh, his bloodline, um, you know, it's, it's all because the Jews were the chosen people. Okay. Um, then the New Testament came into play. And that's where things kind of changed up. And so let's let's go and see what the Bible has to say about who God's chosen people are. And you know the thing the thing that that brought me to this was the the attack on Israel. Um, you know, I just I've always not always, but since I was given the anthrax vaccination, um, for sure I've had a major distrust of government. Right, our government. Definitely foreign governments. Um, and so to me, when the attack on Israel happened, I'm like, how the heck are these guys paragliding into Israel where there's this Iron Dome 
you know, they can shoot down missiles and whatever else. They got the best defense and the best intelligence in the world. Um, you know, it's arguable whether ours is or not, but it doesn't matter. They, they, they are at the top of the game when it comes to intelligence, when it comes to self-defense of Israel. Um, and so to me that automatically stood out as fishy, right? I'm like, something's off here. I got that major gut check about something's going on. Something is not right. And then I really struggled when I've seen the indiscriminate or at least you never know what, if, if you're being fed the truth or not online, right? Whether it's mainstream, mainstream media or whoever else you're watching online, you don't know what's true and what's not true. That's where you really have to go into yourself. You have to um, meditate, pray to God, focus on him and ask him for the answers and seek his advice and his wisdom and his guidance because everything is so confusing anymore, guys. It's There's misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, you know, and it's ridiculous, right? And in the crazy thing is, um, is that Obama actually had a law passed where it's legal to propagandize the U.S. citizens by the mainstream media. Hey, go figure, right? So it, it's extremely hard to to watch TV and you wonder why people struggle with with some of their beliefs. And to me, it's like, man, you know, growing up and I don't know, maybe Maybe they were lying back then, or maybe they weren't. I don't know. It just, it wasn't as blatant, right? Um, I remember watching CNN. I won't touch the, the station anymore, not with the 10-foot pole, but I remember watching CNN when I was younger and and feeling like the news on there was was trustworthy and, you know, there, and maybe it was just my um, being naive. Right. But, um, I just felt like they were going to tell the truth. I mean, I figured news is news and now you just, you just don't know. And so really I urge you to go in to yourself, um, do your thinking, do critical thinking, um, pray to God, ask him for guidance, for wisdom, for discernment. And that's kind of what I did over this whole situation um, with who God's people are, because, um, you know, I just, I, to me, it's hard to just blindly back a nation, um, just because the Bible talks about it, right. Or because Kim Clement talked about it or because Don A. Petruska, um, is all on board for it. And I believe Kim Clement, he, he was an, a verified actual true prophet of God. I, I have no doubt about that. And um, so that's, that's where my confusion was coming in. Right. And so, you know, I remember this prophecy where he's, he's talking about, and he just constantly says over and over, Israel is forever. Israel is forever. And I'm like, man, I'm like, and at first, when I first saw it, it wasn't a big deal, right? Because I was like, eh, it's Israel, right? Until I decided to put on my thinking cap and my praying cap and the whole, uh, what was it? October 7th thing happened. And I'm like, something's not right. Something's, something's off here. And so um, the main thing to know is that, no, I am not against all Jews for Pete's sakes, okay? There, there are your Jewish people who actually have faith in God, right? Obviously, their their belief is a little bit different than ours, right? They don't believe Jesus was the Messiah um, or is the Messiah. Um, there's variations that I've heard that are just disgusting um, as far as like the Talmud and, and stuff like that. And I won't go into that because I don't feel like it. It um, really needs repeating, but um, the things they say about Jesus in the Talmud are not, not good at all. 
Um, and then, but anyways, you have the, the Jews that believe in God and trust in God. And then you have people that claim to be Jews, right? And these are people, and, you know, you could probably, I, I'm not going to throw in any in particular people, right? Um, I think you could look to Hollywood. You could look to um, definitely the leaders of Israel. You could look to a lot of our leaders in our country. Um, you know, apparently um, our leaders actually are required to take an oath to Israel before an oath to the United States. I did not know that. Did you? That seems a little weird, right? So, um, but these these other basket, right? So there's the, the religious Jews, the actual Orthodox Jews, or, or I don't even know if you should call them that because I think there is a Jewish um, sect called Orthodox Jews. But um, anyways, the ones that actually truly believe in God, and then there's the ones that claim to be Jews that aren't really Jews. And these ones are the ones that I'm talking about. These ones are the ones that they use the Jewish name as a mechanism for um, getting their way, right? And it's like a little kid, if um, if you don't get your way, you throw a tantrum, right? And their tantrum is anti-Semite, right? And so let's, let's jump in to see what the Bible says. I don't want to take too long um, because I know your guys' time is valuable. But uh, I also wanted to get a video out, so there. But uh, let me share the screen here. And let's start with Romans 9, 24 through 33. And we are among those whom he selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, those who are not my people, I will now call my people, and I will love those whom I did not love before. And then at a place where they were told, you are not my people, there, there they will be called children of the living God. Obviously, right there, he's talking about the Gentiles, right? Um, the people who become Christians. And concerning Israel... Isaiah the prophet cried out, Though the people of Israel are as numerous as the sands of the seashore, only a remnant will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth quickly and with finality. And Isaiah said the same thing in, other, in another place. If the Lord of heaven's armies had not spared a few of our children, we would have been wiped out like Sodom, destroyed like Gomorrah. And then it talks about Israel's unbelief. What does all of this mean? Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, they were made right with God, and it was by faith that this took place. But the people of Israel, who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping the law, never succeeded. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of by trusting in him. They stumbled over the great rock in their path. God warned them of this in the scriptures when he said, I am, a pl I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. But anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Now, obviously that rock that they're talking about is Jesus. He is the rock. And because they do not believe that he was the Messiah, they killed him. Um, basically, it prevented them from being God's people anymore because they're not they're not believing that uh, Jesus is uh, the Son of God. Revelation two nine. Now this is where they kind of talk about um, the other basket of the uh, Jews that I was talking about. Revelation 2, 9. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy pl 
blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not, because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Again, this back, basket of people is saying, we are Jews, we are Jews, we are Jews, we are Jews. And God is saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Revelation 3, 9. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Again, they're saying that they are Jews and they are not. And that's the second time where the Bible refers to this second basket of Jews over here as um, synagogue of Satan or of Satan's synagogue, right? And so a lot of the evil that you're seeing in the world seems to be, if you follow the money trail, perpetrated by one set of people. So where does this put us? Okay, so this this is where I stand. And I'd love to hear your input on this because, again, you know, we're all learning together. We're all um, trying to get through this very, very confusing world um, right now together, right? And the only thing that we know for sure is that we love God and God loves us, okay? But I'd love your input if you have some. But uh, so... Used to be the Jews were God's chosen people, okay? Now, in comes Jesus. The Jews decided, nope, he is not the Messiah. Those Jews that decided he is the Messiah became Christians, or I believe there's probably a Messianic Jew. I, I know I've heard about them. I don't know a lot about them, so I apologize. Um, but anyways... Then they become Christians. They are God's chosen people. Then you have the other batch of Jews that, um, you know, they're still trying to keep the law. But guess what? The law isn't working because God said, no. You were supposed to start trusting me here. And because you're not trusting me, you're not in. You're not in the club. Okay, so you're not God's chosen people. And then there's this basket of, of other Jews over here where they're just saying, oh, but we're Jews, we're Jews, we're Jews, we're Jews. And God's saying, no, you're not. No, you are not. And so um, hopefully that clears that up. Um, us Christians, we are considered uh, God's chosen people now. Um, I believe that when Kim Clement talks about Israel, um, or was talking about Israel because he's no longer with us. Um, I believe that he, Israel was not the nation of Israel. I believe that the Israeli government is, is most likely corrupt, um, about as corrupt as our own government. Um, but I believe that when he's talking about Israel, um, he is talking about Christian believers. Now I could be wrong. Um, Probably the only two people that could answer that is Clint, Kim Clement, which he can't because he's dead, or God, right? And uh, so, you know, one day when I see God, I'll probably ask him that question, you know, but I, I imagine I'll probably already know when I see him. So anyways, so my idea is, is that when when the Bible in the, in the um, especially like Revelation or um, or like a lot of your current day prophets are talking about Israel um, or even the prophets in the Old Testament when they're re referring to events way in the future, which are actually happening right now. Um, I was considering um, playing this episode and I still might, um, but it's like an hour long and it's ridiculous. And I know you guys don't want to sit through it, but it's amazing. It lists 25 ways. It's with um, Clay Clark and uh, Donna Clement Petruska. And uh, Clay Clark, Clark goes down and he lists 25 things that are happening right now um, that were predicted 
for the end times. And so basically he's listing how we are in the end times um, and uh, including the false prophet being here and who he believes the false prophet is. Anyways, it's really cool. Maybe I'll still do it. I don't know. If you guys, if, if you want to see it, let me know. Okay. If you want to see it, hit me up on Facebook, leave a note in uh, YouTube or, or however you could get a hold of me, text me, whatever. Let me know if you want to see that. It was pretty incredible. But anyways, uh, let's, let's go ahead and pray. So God, we thank you for this day, Father. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you continue to give us a discernment in these end times, God, to know what is right and what is wrong, God, and to um, be able to figure out the ins and outs of this world um, as we see it, God, because there's things are so confusing anymore. And what we see on TV is to, as opposed to what we're seeing in real life. And, and, you know, it's confusing, God, even, even in our churches, we're told certain things, Lord. And, you know, I know for one, for me, it, it, uh, I got, I got to check in my spirit when, when they, when they say certain things or like when they shut down in COVID, God, I got that check in my spirit that this is not right. And God, so I pray that you continue to give us discernment um, in these end times and wisdom. And Lord, I pray for our country. Help us to come back to you, Lord. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. God, uh, guys, <laughs> God. Hey, God. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you very much. Um, and I will uh, talk to you later. Take care.